Good day, everybody. Welcome once again to this episode of Fundamentals of Subsea Drilling Engineering. Um, in this episode, we'll be discussing jack up rigs as a type of bottom supported rigs. So, the outline of today's conversation is as follows We'll be looking at um, jack up rigs, the operational details, how they are supported on the seabed. Then we will per we'll look at the calculation of how we determine the required leg length when selecting the jack up rig. Then we'll look at the potential or typical accidents and challenges um, of using the jack up rig. Then we'll look at um, types of jack up rigs and uh, sorry, examples of jack up rigs and um, their specification details. So moving right into it, um, jack up rigs, as we already know, are classified based on their support type. So they can either be supported by the mat or by the spot can. And they can also be differentiated by the leg type. Um, one is called the truss type or the lattice type. And the second one is the column, the, the column type. Um, what you can see, the schematic, you, sorry, the drawings you see to your right. Here you see your, your, the legs with the spot can. So this is the lattice type leg and the spot can. And here you see the column leg with the mat. And um, clearly below them, you see the associated pictures. So a quick run through on um, the column type, column, column or tubular, which has the mat support. The rest on bottom, um, on the sea bottom by the means of a large mat. So you have the column, the, the legs of the column connected directly on the mat and the mat sits on bottom. The operating areas of about 50 meters. For obvious reasons, the column and I don't see that column standing the effect of high currents, especially when it, when it runs deep. And um, it should be known that the mat penetrates the soil just lightly. So you have the, the mat sitting on the soil and there will be just minimal penetration. For obvious, I mean, we should know that selecting the mat type of rig for a particular environment, the, the type of seabed is going to be a huge factor in determining in, in choosing this rig if you have a seabed that is very undulating i don't think that the mat um, type is going to be the kind of um rig you like you would like to choose the second type which right now i think is the mostly um is the, is the type that is widely used everywhere because both on very flat surfaces or undulating surfaces you can actually use them because all the legs are independent all the trusses are independent and all the spot cans are independent the um the jackets are in the, the legs are independent like i just said it has um either mats or spot cans at the end but um, most times we see them with spot cans the, the spot cans penetrate the seabed kind of anchoring the rig on bottom and they work in areas of from 350 to 500 in the new generation the new generation jackups work at about 500 feet so the jackup rigs how do they get to the areas where they will operate we have their is either that is either we tow them so they are in water they have their legs jacked up and towed to the location or they are placed on the tow barge and taken to the location so what you have to the left is the wet tow where we have um vessels towing them to location or the dry tow where you put them on the on a, on the on the on a barge and tow them to the location and once they get to location next thing that is to be done is if, if they're on the barge they're offloaded they are taken to the location the legs are, are the, the legs we take the legs down and they are preloaded on the seabed and once they are preloaded it's tested we jack it up and we commence operations so what are the i mean talking about the operational details just giving a, a detailed run through on what i just spoke on what i just spoke about the installation of the legs are, is very important it's done by rack and pinions where um, the rack and pinions kind of jack the legs down um the operating speed of those jack and pinions is between one to three feet per minute and when it gets on bottom they will be preloaded so preloaded is like getting them into the seabed gradually until it goes that gets the required penetration and sits on bottom there are three various modes of preloading so it's either they go with extreme caution where the hull is sitting on water as we preload so in the in the event that there's an abrupt punch through the bed the hull sits on water or there's a um, caution caution is just having the 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 hull two foot from 
water so that in the event that there's a quick punch through, there's a splash and it, 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 it sits. Then there's um, no cushion. Most times, no cushion, we, that's, that's pretty much done in areas where perhaps we have a very good grasp or in grasp of the geotechnical, um, the, the geotechnical data of that environment. Perhaps there's been a lot of penetration there. So we are kind of confident of that, of the, of the strength. So we don't go with any caution. That, that's done with about the, having the hole five foot from water while doing the preloading. So once that is done, we jack the rig to require the elevation or air gap. And that air gap is dependent on the wave height, of, depending on the wave height in that area. We'll be looking at that when we are looking at the calculations required in selecting the leg of a rig. How do we select the legs of the jack-up that we are, we are about to hire and get into a contract? So the leg length is very important. I think the only variable that we don't, we're not very sure of in all these variables we see here is the penetration. So the main formula to have in mind is the leg length is equal to P plus D plus A plus C plus G plus S. We have all of them defined here. Now, it is very dependent on, we have all this information, the air gap. So the air gap is the tide in that environment, the storm elevation plus the swell. So once you have all that added together, you have the safety factor of 10%, that gives your A. So you have your A here. The P is the penetration, which I say it's it's like one of your knowns there. So you put some sort of safety factor there. The water depth, we know. The air, the air gap, we now know, calculating from this. The C, that's the height of the hull, which you see here, we know. We know that. The J, we know. That's the height of the jack house, we know. Then the residual elevation above the jack house, we also know that. So... The variable that we don't know is this. So once we're able to, from the geotechnical analysis and from the borehole, um, so we get to that environment before the jackup comes, we take a call and we do um, various tests like the unconfined compressive strength test, finding out how, which will help us determine the penetration dead based on the load, on the preload that we're going to be loading the rig. And with that, we can we can sort of decipher the expected penetration. And with that, we can actually calculate and know that, okay, if this rig is coming with a 500 foot length, with this water, with this air gap, with the, with, um, with the air gap, with the um, the hull, the hull, the jack house, um, the water depth expected in that area, we, should, we will be able to use this rig. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you have um, all the variables that you need, you should be able to get all your ducks in a row. Um, this is typically what the Jacob Brig looks like. So this is what the deck, how the deck plan is. That's the heli deck here. These are cranes. You have the jack house where the legs will be jacked up and down. Um, then here, looking at it from, from the side, that's your jack house there. You have your spot can, you can see that clearly. Then you have the, the master, the drill floor somewhere here. Can't leave a beam that skids out over the platform or where we'll be drilling. And um, just looking at looking quickly, what are the advantages of using this type of rig? We're able to jack up to an existing structure, get the cantilever over, and drill our wells. It's a, it's a surface BOP system, so easy to maintain, and it's a stable work platform. Sits on bottom. Now, what are the concerns? It's very slow to tow. With, with the legs jacked up while we tow, um, we all know that once the legs are up, there's a there's a the center of gravity is really really high and that makes it very unstable. Um, the leg penetration, because of the um, the lot of uncertainty that is attached to it, it's a problem. Now, if there's an environment where we already have another jackup that's visited and you have footprints there, those footprints can actually be an issue because bringing a new jackup in that environment can either worsen the case and get, get the spot count stuck. I've seen it happen before where a rig was on a particular location for almost three months and they could not get the leg out punch trues now i'll try to explain this for a little bit so it is possible that while you are preloading you have hard formation then you have yeah sorry you have it you have um soft formation then you have a, a thin hard formation then a soft formation below and you maybe you don't know for maybe from the geotechnical analysis done you have that information but 
of course with all these studies there's always some uncertainty then you go to preload as you preload you go through the soft formation and you sit you are sitting on the hard formation and with just a little test you think that okay you're almost done and you decide to apply just a little more load to be able to ensure that you are you have that you have that final build up then all of a sudden that thin hard layer cracks and it dips and you're not expecting it so you're perhaps you're you're in the you're you're in the no caution zone you are preloading with no caution now that can actually get you dropped because it can actually kink the leg the leg of that rig and perhaps deform it so that is a potential risk so um this is just seeing the numbers that we have into play this is the elevation above the jack house this is our uh, our uh, 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 air gap that's the water depth and this is the the penetration just pretty much showing out um showing how all the numbers that we spoke about play out what are typical accidents that these rigs can have so um i'll attempt to explain them one by one so we have it possibly capsizing that's the the, the picture you see to your far left and that can come as a result of having a punch through, of um, having scoring in that environment. So scoring happens when the water waves, when after perhaps some sort of penetration has occurred, scouring from that environment washes off whatever so whatever soil that the the um the legs are buried in. And before you know what's happening, it's exposed. And when it's exposed, the legs are unstable, and you don't have some sort of um, security around the legs and it's possible that that rig becomes that rig becomes very unstable so all this can actually cause um capsizing running aground can cause uh, uh, um, capsizing how can that happen perhaps the rig is being towed to location there's debris on the sea bottom perhaps the descent survey wasn't done and there are debris and um, structures under and while you are towing the rig to location it hits or snags onto that debris or structure and it's it capsizes um there could be collusion with the platform or jacket perhaps we are going to be drilling the wells from from a platform and the rig is to approach the platform gradually get the cantilever above uh, skid the cantilever above and drill and maybe while it was while it was um getting there due to human error we due to human error it, it, that happens and it collides with the um it collides with the with the platform I'm, i just put this picture out here um to see pre pretty much ai generated was for us to see how bad it can get when um when any of these events happen so these are different um rigs just for us to look at and appreciate what the rig looked like so to your to our far left is the gsf compact drill light it's a truss type that's the truss type um legs with spot cans it belongs to um global um global santa fe we have the rbf 206 that's uh the column type it has with the column legs then here to the far right we have the gsf constellation being towed to where it's um where it's expected to operate so this is um the specification mm -hmm. details of a typical rig here is um gsf um gsf adriatic six um it's the spot can diameter about 46 um, fit this, this is a very important information when choosing your jacob because in the event that you've had another jacob visit that a platform where you've been you need to know if this spot can is bigger or is smaller um it's operating depth is about 225 feet um pretty much other information you should know you should know about the um bop equipment as well control equipment it has a 10,000 psi bop it's the amount of cranes he has and all the information that you pretty much need he has a thousand six hundred horsepower slush pumps two of them on the rig so this is pretty much when when they send you when you want to use the rig this is the kind of information you evaluate even though they are they are, they are this is like the summary but you also get technical sheets that is um, much more detailed so thank you very much for listening to the end um we will see you in the next episode don't forget to li like share comment and subscribe see you in the next episode bye for now